Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Essence Show today. We have some incredible guests that we'll get to in a second. And so I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. And we got a lot of different programs that we do. And we're primarily a youth service provider, but uh, we work with um, adults in the, com in the community and business, uh, have art galleries in the malls, and um, music programs and college programs. So look us up, Service Rendered Incorporated. Um, so here today, my wonderful guest from, from S's, as you can see, the S's show, um, is uh, Owiso Makuku. Owiso Makuku, what, 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 do you, what do you do? I mean, what's your title at, um, S in S's? Hi, Bruce. Thank you for inviting us to be on your show. Um, I am the Community Development Director for the town of Essex. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Okay, and, and we have um, Greg uh, du Dugan. D Duggan. 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 Yep. I'll get it right. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, that bothers you too. <laughs> no, so, not really. I'm used uh, to it. <laughs> what do you What do you do? Uh, I'm the deputy manager for the town of Essex and Village of Essex Junction. And thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, people know that's like the mayor almost. You know, not quite. Well, <laughs> either you, either you are, either you, either the mayor or or town manager the or constable. The con <laughs> All right. I'll go with constable. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. No one knows it a constable. I have no idea either, but it's, I know it's not a mayor, so. <laughs> so let's talk about yourself a little bit there, um, Oiso. So what do, where do you hail from? Um, what, you know, what's, your, what's your goals, dreams, and aspirations? What got you into this position? So I grew up in New York City, and I went to Middlebury College, which is how I ended up here in Vermont. Um, but after Middlebury, I went into the Peace Corps, and while I was in the Peace Corps, I decided that I wanted to do something with a social purpose and so I graduated from I, I left the Peace Corps and I went to um, graduate school for architecture and urban planning and I've been working as a planner ever since I graduated oh you've done we're gonna talk about some of the things you you have done in Essex um, so great what about you you know what's your how, what brought you into this position and, uh, and what's your goals dreams and aspirations I also went to Middlebury College. That oh, also brought Middlebury. me here. I also wanted to do social stuff. I, <laughs> um, no, I went, to, I went to Middlebury College. I was an English major, um, so I was trying to figure out what an English major does after college, and I uh, ended up working in journalism uh, for several years, community journalism, um, and I, I liked that work. I liked talking to people. I liked telling their stories. I liked um, digging into issues and doing research, and I always found myself wanting the stuff that I really liked writing about. I found myself wanting to do it. Um, so I, I decided to go back to school. I went to graduate school. I got a degree in public administration, um, and then I was hired in Essex as the town planner almost nine years ago, and um, have had some different roles since then, and that brought me to the, uh, the deputy manager role that I have now, but it was basically a desire to, to get involved with community building and um, community development and trying to, to create community and build community. That's, that's great. So. Middlebury College is part of one of our <laughs> programs. Go Panthers. I guess we should put a plug in. I know. I feel as though we should <laughs> hold something my, up. The I Middlebury show, guys. People <laughs> always have the Middlebury flag, but Middlebury. I forgot mine today. <laughs> so, so let me tell you a quick story. So um, first of all, um, um, it's, um, the first black uh, African-American um, graduated at, out of a, a college One, two, in the whole United States. Alexander and, uh, Twilight. Huh? Alexander Twilight. That's right. right. And so yeah, you when you first oh, come around the roadway <laughs> to, to go up into Middlebury, they got the Twilight Building right there. Mm -hmm. What a incredible building. So I'm, I'm always so honored. When I first uh, saw years ago, I snuck in the building, went downstairs. I had to use the bathroom, actually. But I snuck <laughs> in the building, went downstairs. I just looked around the building. I was like, yes! Here's a man who, yeah. the first black man in America graduated from Middlebury College. How important is that? I think I never really appreciated what a statement it was, mm -hmm. but it's such an amazingly beautiful building with such prominence as you're entering the Middlebury yeah. campus. No doubt. That I'm actually really honored and excited to think about its physical presence there at the awesome. gateway to Middlebury. Yeah. I know, it's like, the, it seemed like the first building. And so another thing too is like, uh, my youth board president, Charlene Fu, is the, uh, goes to Middlebury. And all she, when she was in high school, she was our youth board president in high school. And um, she helped create the uh, Chill Out Youth Center in the University Mall at the time. And um, and she was ready, we were trying to prepare her to get to college, you know, whatever. 
and she only wanted to go to, she's from China, so she only wanted to go to one college. I say, and that was Middlebury. Uh -huh. I say, Charlene, come on, you gotta fly to more. Bruce, Bruce, but I only want to go to one college. I was, so I said, but you gotta fly to like other colleges, you know. And then um, she did, but um, I said, don't worry, we're gonna get you in Middlebury. But I didn't have to say, she had like a 4.04 GPA, oh. so yeah. she was qu qualified anyways. I've but, met her, she's driven. Yeah, yeah, you met her. You met she's her. going uh, places yeah, for yeah. sure. Man, she's like on it. She be, when I see her today, when I always see her, she is so mature. She's like, she seemed like a senator or something when I'm talking to her. I'm like, wow, girl, Charlene, you the bomb diggity. <laughs> so um, thank you for going to Middlebury. I went to Northwestern <laughs> University. <laughs> So, ah, blah, blah, that's another damn show. Uh, <laughs> so, what, so, uh, we, so, what, so I know you guys, what are you working on in, in um, you know, in your department? What, you know, I know you got some, I was there one time in your office and, um, and I saw you had a meeting, you had your staff there, y'all was doing all the talking and doing stuff. So, so, so what are you be doing? What, what you guys be talking about? So, community development is, the community development department is the umbrella for um, community development, economic development, and planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. And so it really speaks to how um, interconnected all of those aspects are. And these days I'm working, um, yikes, yeah, so uh, I'm working on a big event called Out and About in Essex. So I'll put in a plug for Out and About in Essex. It will be October 2nd and 3rd in the town and the village of Essex. Um, it's a joint collaboration between the two entities and um, it, a good time was had by all last year. So look for flyers. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be <laughs> food there. I mean, what's going on? It's gonna be we gotta pay for food and stuff. You will have to pay for food, mm -hmm. but the um, the event was conceived of with grant funding from ACCD last year. During um, well, we're still in COVID, but last year they provided this grant funding to support small businesses. And so what we how we used our money in Essex was that we provided fifteen dollar vouchers to Essex households. Mm -hmm. And, um, and solicited Essex businesses to be part of the event and um, to accept the vouchers. And we overlaid the whole weekend with music and family-friendly entertainment. And to put it simply, a good time was had by all. It really helped the businesses. Uh, they felt really good about it. They felt supported by the town. Uh, the residents felt like there was something that um, that could bring them all together, and um, you know it really was a very successful event. And so we're building on the success of last year. With this year, we've got new sponsors, uh, or we've got sponsors this year that we didn't have last year. Right. And so yeah. we're increasing yeah. the vouchers. So um, sure uh, Northfield Savings Bank is um, is a big sponsor. So is Vermont Federal Credit Union. So is Ccom. Um, we're getting um, a gift certificates and gifts um, for raffles that will be held um, throughout the weekend from all of our small businesses that are participating. Uh, we've got a couple of gift baskets from the likes of like Twin Craft. Ah. Um, we have, um, I don't want to forget any sponsors because yeah, it's just or, so important know, for people well, to be recognized. Look at your um, um, community bank, yeah. yes. Um, you got a just, community bank. What's the other bank down on Chevron? What was the name of that one? Seacom was the one. Seacom, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never heard that thing. But <laughs> thank you, Seacom, for um, sponsoring this um, Out and About event in essence. So we appreciate them for doing that, and we appreciate you planning. Yeah. Now, let me ask you some questions about that event. Okay. This, uh, so last year, so you're going on the, off the measurements from last year, how you get, got getting better for this year. So how many, what, who, who showed up? Well, so thank you for asking that. Um, Last year, one of the things, so with last year we had a really short planning period for it because the grants were, um, the grants were available in late August and <laughs> we needed to spend the money by like the first weekend in November and so we really had to act really quickly and so we used a venue at Five Corners and we used a venue at the town center but this year we're also wrapping in Susie Wilson Road because we've got hundred of, hundreds of wow. rental units on that side of town. We've got um, multiple single family homes and a lot of businesses that benefited to some degree but actually having this in their backyard especially with the increased number of vouchers that we have this year should bring a lot more business and a lot more recognition and awareness of the businesses that are there 
um, for um, for the businesses on the part of the residents. And this isn't just an Essex event. I mean, once you start folding in music, it really just becomes right, sure. it's a, it. Anyone's invited. Right. Um, all of Chittenden County, you know, no feel free to come it. on over and enjoy the weekend. No doubt about it. And plus, um, like you said, it helped the businesses, and um, that's real. That's a big deal, you know. It and builds plus, community and builds helps, and makes people feel as though the town is looking out for them. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And, and just, just pray that you know, like, boy, I mean, it's, it's places in the mall that don't have like the shoe department, gigantic, eight thousand square feet, whatever. They don't have enough people to. They have to. They couldn't stay open for so many hours a day because they don't have enough people to work there. Right. And there's another place that Hallmarks, same thing was across. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, dang. You know, we just don't have no workers, you know what I mean, to um, help these business, um, you know, well, help themselves, yeah. you know what I mean? And so it's, it's kind of weird, like, you know, it's like, what, we don't, I know it was um, it has something to do with the unemployment benefits that um, the federal government, you know, gave out. You know, yeah. people, people also deserved and earned. But, um, <clears throat> but and that, is, that is part of the equation, but I think we're also finding that people have thought about what they want out of life mm -hmm. while they were in lockdown and have thought about quality of life and the type of business that they want to work for. And I think that, um, you know, there's some of that contemplation happening also. Mm -hmm. um, salaries and wages, of course, mm -hmm. are things yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. people realized, I guess, with a few more dollars mm -hmm. in their pockets. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. just realized Everything's that. Things still going up, like the uh, real estate yeah. and um, renting and leasing places. They just, like, they just, some places, some people said they would double. You know, first, I'm um, um, not double, but almost, what was it talking about? Um, for like uh, renting apartments, they really, really went up. Rents higher. are going rents, up yeah. at Incredible unprecedented rates, rates yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, and plus, you know, in Vermont is, you know, they, they own it, baby. <laughs> Those real estate guys are, you know, they just, I guess they try to, you know, they have their um, needs in too, you know what I mean? As far as how things going up on them, probably. Like, you know, of course, you remember during COVID that, uh, like, uh, lumber, you know, lumber mm -hmm. was like, yep. well, can I, can I get a two by four? Yeah, yeah, well, it's going to cost you five more extra dollars, whatever, yeah. you know, because we got to, you know, especially, we don't have nobody cutting wood or, yeah. it's crazy. So, we, you know, what, oh, oh, go ahead. what Out and About was conceived last year, and it was Aweso and, and her counterpart um, in the village of Essex Junction. They, I mean, when Aweso says that the money was there and they had to spend it, that's what it was. And they yeah. turned around this huge event yeah. incredibly fast. Um, last year was a time of year when... A lot of the restaurants had been closed. A lot of the businesses um, hadn't been open to the public. We were in the, the depths of COVID. And so it was really an opportunity to, yeah. to get the community out, to, to shop at these stores, to eat at these restaurants and, and get people out. And um, it was awesome feedback, uh, amazing job by Oiso and the rest of the people working on it. And like she said, just trying to build off the success of it this year and um, expand to another mm -hmm. part of the community and, and really make it a county-wide event, statewide event. We'll have the tourists in town for yeah. leaf peeper season. And, exactly. And the more wow. people we can get to come to Essex, the better. So oh, it is great. true, yes. And, and so, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that I think that I've told you my, um, my attitude about how boundaries are really arbitrary. And um, the more festivals and events there are, the more people are coming to Chittenden County. They're coming, they may be coming to Essex for out and about, but maybe they're staying overnight in Burlington or South Burlington sure. or Williston. And every time that something happens in Burlington and we get some benefit or any time something happens in any other right. city or town in the county, we all reap the benefit. And so the fact that we're, that we're having this one event, I think will have a ripple effect for a lot of different no people. And it. so, no um, you know, if we can establish ourselves on the map for, yeah. you know, potentially the first weekend in October every year, yeah. you know, I mean, it'll be that much better for everybody. All the time. Yeah. Establish yourself all the time. Um, yeah. And then you will. You will. You work, you, you're working on it. So now you explain everything how how last year event went and how big it is going like almost to Susie Wilson Road with this event. But um, what what is what's it, what do out and about mean? What does that mean? What does it mean? You know? I get it. It goes a play off of the, the COVID situation last year of everybody being quarantined, stuck at home, <laughs> not being able to get out. And it was just trying to drive home. There was a, um, I, almost, I don't want to call it a pilot project, but a smaller scale version in Essex Junction that, that the village hosted. Um, and I can't remember if you were involved with that, but it was, I wasn't. was Essex, was Essex Gets Out? It was... No, so Essex Eats Out was the, is the other event that, um, that the nonprofits put on, I think. Oh, that's the, right, um, that's The social right. service agencies 
but Robin's event was um. Oh, it's on the tip uh, of my tongue, and it's it, some version of it. Maybe they'll come right. to us, but it was it was really out and about. Was really just on on emphasizing that get outside, get right. get out and see some people. No, no, you talking Stay about Robin? Ro I mean, um, Robin Parks, Pierce. Parks and, Parks and Rec oh. did something too, right? Similar Parks to is part of it. Um, oh, yeah. The administration right. team right. is part of it. I mean, I mean other, there's so many different events, layers not, not of out people. A, not out and about. I'm talking about they did something in the up there, in the green right around that um, around the village there. Did they do something, some type of? I think the Kirsten was saying something that they did. Open and outside. That was the oh, that was the outside. one in June. Um, I yeah. As far as the park, um, Parks and Rec. Yeah, they've got stuff going on throughout the year. Um, trying to think of exactly what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's yeah, there's been some food truck events in town. Uh, up the the Essex Experience has, did some stuff throughout the summer. There was an event, um, weekly event at Price Chopper in town. Um, Got stuff going on at Five yeah. Corners throughout the year, so yeah, there's there's a lot yeah. happening. That, that's so, yeah. that's Peter so Edelman at the Essex Experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've got um, tunes and trucks on Wednesday mm -hmm. nights. That's right. That's <laughs> Maybe right. That's Thursday nights called. also. I must be just hungry because he said chili. <laughs> there's and so much going <laughs> on in Essex Rudy's these days. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, we're we going to stay on you for a minute because you did this incredible Juneteenth event. What do you think about that? And so. so <laughs> So, yes, we held the first, the first <laughs> Juneteenth um, event was held last June 19th, and you were one of our speakers or one of our performance artists. That was really fabulous. I read, a, I read stories out there. And about. that was, I mean, so many community volunteers came together to realize that event, and um, it was really, that was, that to me was sort of a, a labor of love for the uh, for a bunch of the students that I'd worked with on the um, the Essex Westford School District's equity policy, um, that was ultimately brought, yep, huge advocate um, was completely behind it, was completely in support of um, of input from I'll say the non-white community. I don't really like BIPOC. <laughs> I don't know why. I usually don't right. say anything. The global majority. <laughs> um, the, she was really in support of, of people of color having tremendous input into that policy, and we had a lot of students who were involved in that. And yeah. again, I, Juneteenth would have happened even if I, even if I hadn't been involved with the Essex Westford School District equity policy. But to have a moment of celebration of African American contributions to life in the United States as we know it just seemed like a fitting tribute after <coughs> after some of the conversations that were maybe not so pleasant that happened during the uh, the school board meetings before they vote before they ultimately adopted the equity policy and you know we had some great speakers we had you we had Andre Redmond Hannah Karki as another student um, sang and was our MC for the event, he sure and was, mm -hmm. wow. amazing. And just Andre came up and sang something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. I liked that. That bit, it was really interesting. And it was cool. You know, a lot of um, multicultural type individuals in the audience, um, different you know, ethnicities, and um, they all came up and read some type of poem or some type of uh, fact um, right. from, the, from your fact cards that you had, like hundreds of those. And they would actually come up, keep reading them, keep reading them. So that was cool. I learned a lot of myself <laughs> <laughs> in reading those cards. Right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah? Damn. It was fun. It was amazing. I mean, I didn't know that a person of color invented central heating or yeah, wow. the sliding double door elevator right. or yeah. or the, what is it called? The, oh, my God, the super soaker water gun. Like, <laughs> See? Here we go. Keep learning stuff. From how did you, how did you find, was it you who did the research and found that stuff? Was yeah. it the whole team who put it together? Um, some of the team uh, contributed as well. I did the majority of the, um, of finding the, the information just because I was more worried about people wasting time with yep. overlapping sources. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so. There was a lot, was, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah was, and once you get going, you're like, oh my God, you just can't <laughs> stop. You just keep doing more research. and. Mm -hmm. The cards were so fun, and oh my God, the volunteers,
created the cards, we strung them out and um, on clotheslines, and that's how people were yeah. able to take them down and read them. So the community was really part of the event. And next year, um, I think that that's what's going to define our event in the future, is that it's going to be really inclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the volunteers were talking about getting um, <coughs> African dance instructors who might teach a core, who might teach a small lesson or something, and then the people in the community that took the lesson might perform for the wow. for the crowd. Awesome. So yeah, so I think that yeah, the, the already on it. Yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna convene, reconvene, talk about the things that we could have done better, and you know, talk about a greater event next year. What, do, what just name one, you can name anything, many examples you want, but uh, what what um, just name one. As far as I care, is how many, what you think you could have do better. Well. The location might have been better. We might have had, I mean, the location was great. We used the pavilion at the Brownell Library, but it turned out to be a really sunny day and there wasn't necessarily enough shade. And um, mm -hmm. the location was great because it was very central and cars were right. going by and so people could see and join if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess my critique is not about yeah. the um, about the venue, but just right. you know, just thinking about things that yeah, that that's that's differently. You know, and you, know, you, check, you know, that was good. You, know, you, you was thinking, you know, the location, and you you talking about you just talked about the environment. I mean, uh, um, you know, just like one enough shade or whatever. So, um, um, I, I'm just trying, when you were talking, I was trying to think in my brain, like, what could what hell of space could it be? You know, what, what else? Could I it know. Be? You know, we traditionally use Five Corners as a venue, and it's a very high-profile location, and it is fabulous for that reason. But I'm not 100% sure, from what I've heard from community members, that it's necessarily the most central venue, that it's... We see the same faces at events, and so that was one of the reasons for the expansion to Susie Wilson Road is that we don't hold events on that side of town, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And so why not spread the wealth? Maybe 40th and Allen Park is a better mm. location. I mean, maybe it allows people to spread out, picnic a little bit more, shade trees, since, yeah. I, since <clears throat> I got into the umbrella yeah. thing. Yeah, um, you got people walking, though, too, walking. Uh, you know. Right, it's served by public transportation. Yeah. That's, you gotta I mean, make sure. You know. I mean, so I think that was a good spot for that, though, right? People just being yeah. able to walk to walk to that location. Yeah. Yeah. E even those little young, young, young um, middle schoolers can come. Yeah. With, with their little team. Up there. And it may be that there's not one ideal location. Yeah. I know. That's. I, I just but, can't think of another. But you know, yeah. based on what you was, what you just said, that was a good one. Did I think about um, how the transportation? And I think you know, you know, it's always something, right? Right. It's always some. So one more event you did. We helped plan up. Essence and um, jumping there, uh, Greg, you know, did their f first national night out. Mm -hmm. And that's something. Wow. Wow. I, that was cool. And, uh, the chief, Ron, was so happy and about how the outcomes, he felt the measurements was good. I did too, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I really did too. It was so many different. John Roddenberg, Ben Roddenberg, um, Corporal Roddenberg. Yep. yep. He, um, boy, he did a lot. He did a lot. He pulled just so much stuff together from uh, individuals who um, who um, just want to be a part of it, you know, on Lions Club and, you know, the um, Army Navy, you know, people, uh, I'm for, you know, we, uh, the Army. National Guard was there, right? National, yeah. National yeah. Guard yeah. Right. Um, were there and they, the um, Army Band, you know, that was awesome. Yeah, and you know, they... Yeah. They got a lot of donations and sponsorships, and so everything was free at that event. Mm -hmm. And I know I <clears throat> saw at least a couple of single moms with kids who came towards the end who were really excited that there was no cost to anything right. and that you know their kids could be part of this event, and there were all sorts of information booths and... Yeah. Just it the was. other town manager yep. was flipping hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah I, I told him it was the best damn hot dog flipper I, ever, I know. <laughs> he was he, he was steady too, but he wouldn't stop. He was just gone. He's yeah. been volunteered for next year too, so yeah. I yeah, he'll, yeah. he'll be back and I, um, yeah. I told him great. I told him great. We was, was having some coffee, so I said, you know, great. They tell you that you were you're going to be flipping dogs. He's like, wait a minute, I never. <laughs> I just pick it up. Evan was so good at it. He was. He only he had a little. Team, he had his team out there, you know. So so that, I think that was good. And like a national night, I was happy that they asked me to help plan it. And so 
And uh, I kind of got to, you know, I was letting them know what National Night um, is across the country because I plan a few in some other cities, you know, help plan a few. And so the thing is that a National Night Out is an uh, event across the country that's usually put on by um, police departments. Mm -hmm. And basically, just a way to say, um, you know, we're, we love our community, you know what I mean? Let's work together. Here's some, um, you know, let's, here's some things that, you know, we want to give back to you, not necessarily give back, but we want to just do these things in our community, you know what I mean? And, um, and so, and normally they have like a parade, they start with a parade, <laughs> most of them start with parades and, and everything else we did, you know, but um, yeah. the parade was, was a little tricky for us, you know, but um, we did everything, of free food, refreshments, face painting, bounce yeah. houses, DJs, and bands. It, yeah. And I think cool, it was cool um, paraphernalia from the, you know, if I may say, from um, the armed forces with mm -hmm. the big old trucks and the uh, fire department, they ladder, 100 foot oh. ladders, or whatever, all the way up and stuff. That was cool. I always, who don't want, never want, who, ever, who don't want to see that? I know. I, I, yeah, I felt like a five year old as I was yeah. like, oh, that is really cool. I could see it from a distance and I was like, oh my God, that's really cool. I grabbed two bottles of bubbles. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> bringing bubbles and cooler my at the art guy. <laughs> but, <laughs> Another important aspect of National Night Out um, is the sense of the police going into the community right. as um, without their uniforms on right. and right. creating relationships with community members. I mean, the serious note of that is just that after all of the violence and protests and mm. anger that oh, it went across of, the of, world, of, 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 right that rippled across the world. Um, you know, I think that, that there's a real need for, for those sorts of events that no, that, I'm not, I'm that support, I'm reinforce, really create those relationships. I mean, everything. Yeah. I think last year, um, during COVID, one of the big things that I got out of it, and I think a lot of people did, was that life is all about relationships. Yeah. Work is all about relationships. It's all about understanding Understanding who's around you, understanding who you want around you, understanding how to how to build ties to sure. your community and to people that you don't even know. And the, and the big deal about it, like, and then we've talked about this, and um, that's one of my objectives working with you guys, is to get the people who live in the community to plan it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, that'll be good. You know, like these. Well, I want to. Well, I'm, I'm Italian. I want to. I want to show. I want to bring some. Uh, I'm Italian peers or family t community to these uh, this the block club we seem to discuss and um guess what and we're gonna speak we're gonna make um you know meatballs and spaghetti or whatever you know and right. guess what when you and, and and when you taste that sauce and the meatball they're gonna be giving it from the great grandmother's um mm -hmm. recipes how wonderful is that i, I can't yeah. wait I can't wait till I start planning those of this. Yeah. But, um, yep. but then, it's a, it, then um, also, too, we got to bring them all together. Like it's a, you know, I don't use yeah. the word. How many years, years or how many times have you heard melting pot? But really, you know, you, you have to. You got to get all these individuals, yeah. these cultural, diverse, diversified individuals, ethnicities together so we can all learn about cultures, right? We all need to learn about each other. And you don't have to learn about it, you know, from A to Z, but, you know, um, but we need to learn about what all of us do, who we are, what, what's our cultures, and you know why you wear why you wear your you know your turban or whatever. You know what I mean? Say why right. what, what does that mean? You know, why do, why you wear certain colors? You know what I mean? What what you know you know why do you, you know di different things? You know what I mean? That individual I don't don't totally understand. I know somewhat about it on the surface, but I want to know more. You know what I mean? Right. So one of the one of the groups that will be performing at um at out and about is going to be the Nepali. Oh, yeah. Cultural dance group. I've seen them perform more than once. They're amazing. I mean, I've just seen a video of them, and I can't wait to see them in person. And Jitan Kadka um, was my connection to this group, and I'm so excited about what he talked about, how he talked about taking a moment to explain um, the tradition of the dance, um, to explain the importance and the symbolism of the outfits that they're wearing, that, you know, as he expressed it, that some someone's walking down the street in traditional Nepali garb, oh, man, and mean, so people unique. know what it is. Right. People mm -hmm. sure. feel like you know they embrace it because they understand something about it. They understand its significance, and they, you know, it's just about education and really like exposure. And Jitan, he knows about yeah. it because those dancers we had them perform for us when they was in Burlington High School. Oh. 
<laughs> cool. So look at the mess. Now they like they like you know they the all stars now. You know what I'm saying? And he was in high school too. And so oh well, we had him performing the contours auditorium actually. And God, what a performance! And they were performing all around places. You know, nice. something else. You know, it's like the Irish dancers. You wow! Do you see the Irish dancers? Mm-hmm. Oh amazing. my! I, I mean, they, how do they be able to <laughs> dance like that? They jump up and I they know. back down and then. I used I'm to like, see them dancing Whoa. on the table at Rira. Me too. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that. How do they do that? Wow! So but, those. Yeah, and we are talking about um, within um, mm-hmm. within the town and the village talking about how to fold in more cultural events and get no more diverse populations involved on our boards and mm-hmm. committees sure. and um, and holding events and no doing things it. intentionally like no doubt about it yeah, and so that's 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 all right, all right. I was say, yeah part, part of the um the the incentive behind these events is just a, it's community building it's getting people out it's coming together it's celebrating the positives around Essex and Right. Whether that's the Juneteenth or right. out and about or National Night Out, but just getting people to come together to see each other, to, to see who else is in the community and appreciate yeah. each other. And, and and also too, um, they need to feel um, the part of something, right. part of and they need to feel like and then do things so, so they know what they feel they're worth. Mm-hmm. Like that's uh, my thing I, every year. That's what we're gonna right. be doing. We're gonna do the dance. We're gonna do the to you know. see a little piece of yourself reflected right. in the goings on in a Especially community you makes at. you feel more of a sense of belonging. We bring some of that stuff like at your house, I mean, right, on, yeah. right into the community. I mean, you know, some of your culture, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's very important, very, very important, very important, you know what I mean? So another thing, too, is like it, it, administrators shouldn't be out there doing that, you know? Just like me and my youth advisory boards, I don't say, I don't bring, I don't tell them what you, I don't say, you're, you've come to this dance or come to this dance. You know, my, I have my youth advisory boards do it. My job is to get the building, get the permits, get, you know, license, get the security. That's my job. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I, 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 I'm not supposed to be out there hustling, you know, getting, bringing all the people together. So the people, like my youth advisory board are the people, and same as yeah. your community um, residents. They are the people. They don't want you to be doing it. And guess what? They're going to want to do it. Right. I, I've, I've done over 700 events. So I already know that people, well, they want to do it. They are going to do it. They're, they're going to be so excited to do it because they, they yeah. want to share themselves and their family and culture and everything, you know? You've set up a great example of how to do it right, how to involve youth mm-hmm. properly. Um, I know one of the things that, that I noticed working with youth on the equity policy was that a lot of times youth are invited to the table, but sort of as a gestural yeah. um, proposition as opposed to any sort of meaningful interaction right. or expecting any sort of meaningful input. And so taking that extra time mm-hmm. to empower youth and give them meaningful roles and get meaningful input from them, I mean, coerce it out of them until they're ready, until they feel comfortable and safe in an environment where adults have not asked them right. traditionally for right. any advice or information or input or anything um, is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so and it's, it's nurturing it. No doubt about it. So, you know, uh, our my organization created youth on boards for yeah. the city of Berlin in 2003. They sit on a police commission, planning commission, school board. And so now we're going to, we're going to, um, we amended it. And uh, now they have, um, we added more boards to the commission in Burlington. And they got voting rights now. Hmm. It's you know, they can't be in certain quorums, you know, but they definitely have a voting. And so what's going to happen, I was talking to Evan, what's going to happen to Evan? Uh, South Bronx, we asked him to do it, and they did it. They made a resolution. Um, Don Turner and um, Milton, is gonna, they're going to do it. And um, in Winooski, um, um, Christine Lott, the mayor, said, Bruce, we got positions. Just come sign up on. So you form boards is important. This year has going to be different from the other years that you've been on boards. Is that um, exactly what you're saying? They're sitting there, uh, Now, like if they're on a finance, pl- finance committee, which is pretty damn boring, it's all about not, I think it is. <laughs> Some you know, kids might like it. Some kids like it. They think they'd like it, you know, because they be there and, they, and it's a good resume building for them. It's a good, good way to, you know, get into the um, finance school or get a, um, um, for CPA or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is that um, now, because my youth board president, um, Reverend Rodney Kalinstrom, a sophomore at Bones High School, now we're going to do like, you have to make sure that they have youth agenda items on, on these boards. You know, they had to come in and talk about, you know, like, if you got $600 left in the deck on finance plan, let's spend it on some youth mm-hmm. education around something. Uh, come, whatever, you know, visit them, go to the deck on 
to the Zoom. So I don't know what, you know, to right. whatever. But they're going to have youth agenda items. And the rest of the board, which um, our youth boards that's going to be sitting on these commissions and committees, um, <clears throat> are going to work with them. They're not going to be like, if you're on the finance committee or you're on the police co committee, they're going to work together and say, well, like, how can I help you on your thing? You know, what can we do like that? Right. And then so we're going to say, yeah, let's use some of this money for the pol police committee. Help these, help our um, peers do with the things that they want to do. So it's going to be working as a network, and um, which we're very happy about. Uh, I'm very happy about. So that's, that's the whole thing. Is like, like I said, the youth board is like the community. You know what I mean? Let them make the decision on the programs, projects, and events that they want to do. Let them make a, feel their buy-in. We're making successful people by doing this. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, somebody get a letter from one of you guys and like because they work with you on some committee or board. They probably go to that college. They probably, you know, and you be like, yo, send this kid to the, you know, let him in, you know. You know, they probably going to go, you know what I'm saying? So how important is that for us in the community? Another thing you said, too, is like, <clears throat> if, if you for planning things with you on your boards or committee or in your departments, we don't want them, once they become part of your department, when you retired or going out to Ruva somewhere, <laughs> it's <laughs> under the old tree, taking a pina colada or whatever. <laughs> There's a story now. <laughs> but anyways, um, we don't want them to say, let's just get rid of everything Bruce did and start from scratch. We want to say, well, Bruce is not here anymore. We're in charge. Let's amend to the follower. Let's just, can we help plan it, right? Right. So that's what we want, you know what I mean? Continuity, so that's what want. yep. Yep. Continuity, exactly. So that's, what, that's what's going to happen. And so, um, so now, this, um, we'll keep going, but I'll talk about this big event. We're going to have an echo. But um, so let's talk about... Um, you know, we still got a little time. You got? Are you are you still are you still good for that? Yep. Okay. Um, let's talk about um, justice, equity, and diversity and inclusion. Now, a lot of cities, you know, around Vermont, you know, have have some issues around it because it's you know this when I came it was the whitest state in Mar Vermont, uh, whitest state in America. Right. So and it seems like it was a good thing. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was a little bit confused about that too when mm -hmm. people said that we were the whitest state in, in the United States. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But, you know, it's okay. It's all right, you know. Um, <laughs> it's okay. So, but the reason why people don't understand much about, say, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, you know what I mean? They, they pretty much, or even justice, because we're not, people who, like me, not getting the right sentencing structure, blah, 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 you know, because the way we, you know, because our physiology is like me, I'm like, like, for instance, I'm doing, I'm, you see me be doing my arms like this, mm -hmm. and, and that could seem threatening to some people. Yeah. You know, instead of getting like a disorderly conduct, they might give me a simple assault or something. I mean, and that's how and they have been doing that stuff like that. So you got to understand who I am first, right? Um, and so um, another thing too is like um, I I understand that it's all about education. You know, why people, should, you know, white people or, or people non you know non people of color um, should learn about you know um, like we like we're gonna be doing more of. You know what I mean? Um, well, first of all, I don't, I don't go to school with you. I'm not going to your church. I don't live next door to you. We don't, we don't, we don't, walk, we don't walk around the other, you know what I'm saying? And so how, how do you really know about me? Mm -hmm. right. You know you know about me through uh, <clears throat> magazines. You know about me through the news. You know about me through right. what people say, right, mm -hmm. stereotypical things. And they're not all saying, like, you know, Bruce is a youth service provider. You know what I mean? They like, you know, I walk around, I got my bull's cap on. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, so I'm looking like I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Yeah, but I am from the South Side of Chicago. <laughs> I am, but I'm from High Park. You know what I'm saying? But still, I got in trouble too. You know what I mean? But you know, you know, but I was one of the richest part of the city, you know, in Chicago. But anyways, went to Northwestern. So you know, so but they don't know that. You know what I mean? So and they don't, you know, they don't know what people's cultures are. Usually they hear the negative stuff on the news. Oh, black people's Turning up the town, look at look at look how right. they live. They right. you know um, you know all these things, they, but they don't understand that more white people live wor worse than that you know than, than black people because it's obviously mm -hmm. more white people. And then uh, <clears throat> so that's so, so what about all that? Who cares? But the thing is that now you got to understand what what you know. So when you learn about Bruce Wilson, oh God, he's got this program got over fifty awards. He got these all these programs for youth and families you know, that he does. You know, and he you know for you know here in the, in the white state of America, his guy you know most of my clientele is not not black. <laughs> you know why? You know <laughs> because they're not here. So I so, say yeah, so once I understand what I do and what, who I am and you know and um. It's, it just changes, you know what I'm saying? They start to, you know, oh, wow. Look at, you know, this guy, did this. what? Oh, I know about the youth centers in the malls. I know about the, all those murals around the community. I know about the programs that, that they did in the schools. You know what I mean? 
that was you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it wasn't me. It's, it's the people who I serve. We all work together to do it, but yeah, and you know, they, they, they don't even understand that it's a person, who, a black person doing all this. Freak uses all around the state, at least four, four places, you know, for a long time, for free to you, for families in the community, had the best stuff, brand new stuff, best stuff in our places, best stuff in our art galleries, nice, gigantic face. This that one was like five thousand square feet, and uh, so I'm just saying we don't we don't come crappy with nobody. We stay high, and when everybody who sponsors, we tell them, we gotta stay high. Yeah. We don't want to like walking in no crappy place. We gotta be nice, you know. And so, but a lot of people don't even know when I sit in my own art gallery. They don't. They, I come stand at the front desk. They they like, oh wow, what is that? And then. Um, you know, they ask questions, and I said, like, yeah. I said, yeah. Well, you got artists? Yeah. Well, let me see some art. And they show it to me. I said, wow, that's incredible. Here, here's my um, a director's card. And um, tell her that you talk to me, and she, we'll make sure it's getting it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm getting carte blanche. You got it, right? And she looked at me. I said, yeah. I said, this is my place. You know what I'm saying? And so they look at me like, you know, huh? You know, how could that be? You know, this is like 5,000 square feet. gigantic. Art, incredible art everywhere. How could you be the one in charge of this, being, this you know? And so I, I get it, I, you know, I, I get it. They just can't believe that, that um, there's a lot of things we do, you know what I'm saying, they, they believe it's me. And I stay low, I don't, I don't be like, oh, I do this, I do that. Yeah. But um, so that's what I'm trying to say, people, more people need to know, not only seeing this, you need to know about us, people, look, they need to know, but they need to be a part, if they just be, they can start right today, just be a part of what we do. Right. Be a part of the, um, um, your event, out and about event, be a part of, a, um, National Night Out and just be a part of what, what we're going to do in the community, bringing the, those cultures together, right? right? So let's, let's be a part. You can start right now and you can understand what they do. Mm -hmm. So so what so what are you guys doing with that, the equity, division, diversity, and inclusion? What 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 are you working on? How are you, how are you bridging? I know you got um, Aaron McGuire working in within the school district, mm -hmm. doing that work. And um, I guess um, um, Marguerite, you got something, CCE, something. <laughs> We, we have a, uh, Sorry. a small CEE, -C -E? is that yeah, Committee on Equity in Essex. Committee on Equity in Essex. And it's, <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, it, and it. It, a lot of the stuff, is, it's been um, stuff that Essex has been working on, growing on, trying to improve on, trying to recognize and learn from and, and get better at, um, basically since George Floyd was murdered yeah. last year. Yeah. And, and the community came to the select board, they came to the trustees, and they said, what are you doing about it? What are we going to do here in Essex? And from there... We've been trying to respond. We have been responding. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's one of the term is um, oh god, I'm blanking now. But it's it can be slow going, and and that yeah. can be frustrating. But um, you know, as far as not having everything change right away, but we've got a small group internally working for the, the committee on equity in Essex. That's um, Aaron McGuire from the school district is is part of that. It's Jill Evans, the um, community justice center director, uh, uh, Chief Ron Hoig of the police department. Um, Oiso is on the on the committee. Uh, Marguerite Ladd, who's our assistant manager, and Evan Teach, who's the unified manager. Um, in that group, oh, did mm -hmm. they act as a steering committee in terms of getting some of this stuff going and trying to identify issues, trying to um, bring in some training for some of the staff from some of our elected officials. Um, out of that, we're, we're working closely with Tabitha Moore, Sue McCormick of Creative Discourse, um, who've been giving us some guidance and some, some um, leadership in that, in that area. We have a racial, I'm blanking, racial and policing task so force. So it was formerly the Policing Racial Justice and Safety Task Force, and now it's and now it's Essex Best. Oh, okay. Building Essex equity, so solidarity, and trust. Oh, great. And, and so, yeah. And so they've got three subcommittees that are that are meeting regularly, um, trying to um, figure out how do we get more representation on our boards and committees? How do we work on policing? How do we do um, better communications to the, the community? Some of the stuff we've done, um, the, the town and the village, um, both adopted in the budget this year, we're, we're giving stipends to volunteers in our boards and committees. It's, it's something that um, we'd heard would be uh, useful for and try to get more people out, A, to just compensate them for their time, but, but B, to try to recognize that people are giving up time. They might need um, some money for transportation, right. for food, <coughs> for childcare. Um, so that's one of the things we've done. It's actually a tangent. A, Tangible benefit, mm -hmm. um, tangible outcome from some of this from some of this work that we've been doing, and well, um, the events, the Juneteenth event, that was the first time the that happened in Essex. Um, all the events. Same with National Night Out. Yep, yeah. National yeah. Night Out too. It's all this effort at community building that you were describing before. I mean, that's, I think that's at at the heart of, of, 
equity, racial justice, and inclusion. I mean, until we know each other and feel comfortable with each other, you know, I mean, there's apprehension probably on both sides. And these community building events really start to break down those walls. I mean, when you're watching a band having a beer with someone who doesn't look like you or watching your kids play together because the kids don't care. Mm. <laughs> they don't notice. They, they see another care. kid that looks their age and or not their age, but they see another pr small person who will run no, around no, with yeah. them and they're all about that. You know, those sorts of um, encounters, like creating those opportunities for those encounters makes such a difference. Yeah. I don't know if I told you the story. I probably did, but um, when you talking about kids, don't really care. They, they just, they just, they don't. They colorblind, right? And so I don't know if they I, truly I might are. told you. I was down on church here. I think I told you that that, and um, I was right there, like about um, by um, where the mall is, you know, right there in the middle, second zone. What is it? The second zone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mall speak. About mall speak. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't so, know. <laughs> so anyway, so um, heading towards the church, you know, Unitarian Church, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was sitting in this in a street, probably like a mule. I mean, like a moose, like this thing is like stupid, like whatever. <laughs> and this little girl walked up on me, right? She was probably like four years old. She was her mother. Her mother let her hand go for a minute, and her mother walked over here to um, one of those stores, you know, just kind of looking at stuff. And then her daughter walked over to me. She was just looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. And then all of a sudden, she's like, she she grabbed my arm and started rubbing my arm, my hand like this. And it, you know, I, I think she was trying to see if this black come off Aww. me. And her mother said, "Oh no, Victor, whatever her name was, <laughs> don't do that." I said, "Yeah, let her do it. Yeah, let her do it." Let her do. And so she, they walked all the way to Unitarian Church. That little girl looked, was looking back at me all all the way, <laughs> waving. I'm waving back at her. I thought that, that was to me that was like that's that's the biggest that's one of the biggest things in my life right there. To see that girl do that, try to rub this black off me. She, I might have been the first black person she ever saw in her life. She's only four years old. Vermont being the white, one of the white states, well, probably is the well. I think somebody said it was the third white state now. But anyways, third, <laughs> first. But you know, just you know, where she lives, she might not maybe never maybe she South might Dakota ever saw a black person. You know. Could be. Yeah. Well, you know, how she walk right? She she walked right up. She started looking at me. She got she she, got, she started rubbing my, trying to rub the black off me. <laughs> that just speaks volumes. That was so though. cool, man. I love that she, so much. Like that, you looked approachable yeah. enough for for her not to be scared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, you know, like you they, know, they don't like, they don't they don't care yeah. about. They just they just they got gun. They, they walk up on you, you know, and in this. Especially at four years old, you know, I mean, like they just adventurous, right? And they, 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 just, they uh, little minds want to know, you know. But uh, I thought that was a cool. Mother was so embarrassed. I'm like, oh man, no, don't let her stop. Let her keep doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm good with that. You know, that's a good lesson for her. She went and found, you know, she like, this guy, he don't look like me. You know, he's he's a little black. Let me walk up on. You know, she did she did the work. She did it. She, she does it when she, right when she does it when she's four means that she's not gonna do it when she's twenty four. Right. <laughs> she's not going to be no, afraid she, to approach. She, she could be married to somebody yeah. who's like me. You know what I mean? But right. I bet you, um, I bet you she's gonna learn more about the culture of, of people who look like me. I know. I guarantee you she will. Because when she sees her book or somewhere, she's gonna want to see what the hell is that about. Yeah. You know, but. Oh man, that's one of my highlights in my life right now. That little girl <laughs> walking on church, and she looked all the way, she looked all the way up to the, she just waved all the way, <laughs> and I'm waving back at her. Smiles and waves from Smiles. kids are maybe I know. like yep. the so, nicest um, things. What are some of the boards, and we're gonna you know we're gonna wrap up a little bit. But uh, tell me, what are some of the boards and committees that that people can volunteer for for like and get stipends? The stipends are going to be available to all of the boards and no, committees. No, no, what's, what's, what are some of the boards and committees that you that you Well, offer? since you mentioned this, um, we have we have vacancies on the Housing Commission, mm -hmm. on the Economic Development Commission. Um, there's an Energy uh, Committee. Energy there's Committee, Conservation, Conservation and, and Trails has some openings oh, on it. Wow. Um, the, the Village has a Bike Walk Advisory Committee, a Tree Advisory wow, Committee, a uh, Capital ones. Planning Committee. Um, we've ones. got plenty of opportunities, yeah. Those are good I, I think uh, CCTV, Channel 17, Town Meeting Television is looking for representatives from Essex, so um, oh, there's awesome. another opportunity, yeah. Help us both out. I know, um, <laughs> who was out? Um, Jordan told me he was coming to see Do Y'all show um, the other day. With the trustee show. Was that yesterday? Uh, Tuesday. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yep. He knew you. I knew Moses. I knew. <laughs> I said, Tell him I said hello. Yeah, so that's cool. So um, 
Um, all right, so um, you want you want to add anything? You know, um, so what else is going on? What's what else coming up? You know, um, so you guys are um, busy going. Everything is good. Economics is good for this uh, SS. Is the economics good for the town? I mean, the city. Or, you know, is it all good? Everything's worked out. You got money for everything. Yeah, we um, we were pleasantly surprised that the the tax receipts came in um, just as they always do, as as well as they always do during COVID. We were a little concerned about what was going to happen with um, unemployment and people's ability to pay taxes, but they came in. Uh, the taxes were due yesterday, the latest installment. Wow. Um, we are starting to work on budgets now. It's budget season, so we're already planning ten months ahead and wow. um, prepping that stuff wow. for for the boards to look at and the residents to vote on in March and April. So. We yeah. do hope that any renters that may be struggling reach out to us either through the Housing Commission mm -hmm. or just to community development generally um, or right. finance if they feel comfortable going to finance. But, you know, we, we awesome. want to create these relationships yeah. that we haven't historically had in the community. I think it's historically, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I feel as though there was government and then there were the people. <laughs> and. I feel as though there was some, there wasn't necessarily as much outreach as we're doing right now. It, it's been up and down, and, and so I've been with Essex for about nine years. Right when I was starting, um, Essex was in the middle of a project called Heart and Soul, Heart and Soul of Essex, and that was really based around getting that community engagement, getting that input, um, and we learned a lot of lessons from that. Uh, the, the challenge is it, it takes a lot of time and it's hard and it's an ongoing process to, to keep doing it and um, people like Oiso are, are here and, and great at it and committed to it and, and that's a big part of it. Um, but she's right, uh, for people who have challenges paying, we, we, um, are, we work with, try to work with our taxpayers, put them on payment plans, um, try to get them um, so that they can you know, find the finances that work for them that also uh, um, less continue their commitment to, to us, to less stress for them. Less, less to them. They feel better. They feel like the community is actually helping them for some yeah. of the right. time they live. They're not just paying out money. They, they actually want to work with me and help me. Yep. Right. So, you know, that's that's so important, you know. And that's and I'll tell you, that's, they'll get back to you. They'll get back to, to you as well, like volunteering on some of these committees and commissions and, uh, and helping some making some decisions on things that you're doing. Yeah. Have some great ideas probably because they live there. Yeah. See a lot of things, right? One, one yeah. more plug, the Vermont, um, Vermont Housing Finance Authority uh, has some federal dollars coming in through, for, for um, COVID relief through ARPA money. They're also helping out with, is it, is it mortgage assistance or renter assistance? Both. Both, okay, great. So yeah, wow. so there's another opportunity for people, wow. um, the Vermont Housing Finance Authority and mm -hmm. just another yeah, resource that people can, can benefit from. Yeah, I think the focus may be more on renters. Okay. Um, but um, because I think that there was there were initiatives before. Oh, and so he, here's a little right here. breaking news. Um, I was um, I was just elected to be on the steering committee of the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition. Oh, wow. So I'm really excited. Oh, I'm glad to, you only got the right person, to, too. <clears throat> well, thank you. Um, I'm really excited to sort of bring my knowledge to that committee, but also bring that knowledge that that committee has. I mean, there's a vast amount of knowledge and expertise in that committee to be able to bring that to Essex. So exactly what is, what's their main objective, this committee? Um, all levels of, and any, um, and all, all levels and all aspects of affordable housing, whether it's social services, homelessness, um, you name it. I mean, it, it, yeah. I don't. I don't think that I could pinpoint any one thing that they do. They're literally that umbrella of affordability um, and focusing on that for the state of Vermont. Wow. So great. So let's talk. Why don't you say something about this master plan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that people might be here. I'm putting your hand for this, a minute. This is, I'll hold it. This is Oiso's project. She should be proud of it for oh. her team and the Essex Planning Commission. Um, but I'll, I'll just uh, be yeah. the model here while Oiso talks about I helped about to bring it <laughs> home. This is the Essex Town Center Master Plan, and it lays out the vision for the um, for a better connected... Um, wait, we have it. <laughs> go ahead, girl. You we go have ahead. it in the Tell thing. Show us what you um, got better got connected, more cohesive town center. And what? this is... Say it again? a better connected, more cohesive town center. Wow. Yes, and so 
the um <laughs> you got any pictures i'm gonna find the pictures there are pictures yeah. there's pictures, pictures. There's, good, um, there's a nice map there's a nice um, that's the area we're talking I about i think greg started on this the, this project was um a three-year effort oh at least three yeah, year three community and a half effort years. three and a half Almost um, four years. Uh, centered around the um, the Essex outlets, um, which are now called the Essex Experience, oh. and it's it's um, the historical down to the historical center of Essex, which is down at the corner of Routes 15 and 128 Towers Road, um, kind of down by Hoagies Memorial Hall, that area, and so all the land use and area around there. So yeah. Wow. yeah, and it's going to serve as the foundation for the zoning changes that we make and what we hopefully so um, how we develop that area. The mixed use neighborhood. So what what, what that mean? Mix mixed use. use is is generally residential mixed with um, with yes, commercial retail, or like and retail. Sometimes it's commercial and retail, but that to me is sort of a vague mixed use. It's I generally think of mixed use as residential and commercial. And so, um, you know, yeah, I know. It seems like a lot of cities doing plants, right? Like you got the BTV plan in Burlington. You got uh, oh yeah, got no, we're Winston doing plan. this one. Huh? This is a live document. <laughs> This is going to be a living document. It's not going on a shelf. In fact, mm -hmm. one of the one of the changes that um, the words, that I, I encouraged when um, when I first got this was that it was on an eleven by seventeen. Um, it was in an eleven by seventeen inch format, which really made it a coffee table book. I mean, to be able to turn the pages, I'm doing this, mm -hmm. and I can't. I don't have space for anything else on my desk, and I'm like, why do we have this? If this is going to be something that people are actually going to use, it's literally got to be in a format that sits in your hand that you don't need to make special place for. It's not a coffee table book. It's an active living document. Book back. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Right, it was a gift. <laughs> no. Yeah, Greg. But give we, me <laughs> that. I'm sorry. Back. <laughs> I'm copy back at the office. Right. <laughs> but, but we said it's right. We we, we, want it, we don't want to just plan. We want to do, and I think we have a good track record of, of doing. After we do the planning, is working now on, on doing the zoning updates based on that. Um, about five years ago now, Essex adopted its town plan. Um, I mentioned Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul was kind of the, the framework that went into the, the town plan, which is the vision for the community for the next eight years. It's required by the state, but we do it, and then we do the stuff in it. And um, the Housing Commission, creating the Housing Commission, which is pretty new, that, that came out of the town plan. Um, we've got a conservation fund that we adopted a few years ago. That came out of the town plan. So it's it's our guiding document. It's something that all residents um, contributed to. We, and we did like a photo contest to get people involved. Um, did a lot of neat stuff and around the heart and soul. And, and it's something that um, won some awards. It's, it's something that for the community to be proud of. and to be even more proud of that, to actually be doing the stuff in there and start chipping away at the stuff that residents said they wanted. So yeah. we and take I, pride in that. Yeah. I, I've got to put in a plug for the Housing Commission because they have been, um, they've been formed for less than a year mm. and they're uh, planning on addressing the, um, the select board on inclusionary zoning mm -hmm. next month and that will be followed by another presentation from a subcommittee on um, the housing trust fund, Great. on a potential housing trust fund, Great. and how that could look. And these are all aspects from our plans and our assessment, our housing needs assessment, like things that we're actually putting into action. And these are dedicated volunteers that are doing these things, mm -hmm. working with staff, and you know, I mean, it. it that's an example. It's a huge example of it. It takes a village. Okay. They just gave their support. We um, we worked with uh, Champlain Housing Trust and yep. Vermont Foundation of Recovery recently. Um, they own some property in 40th and Allen that they're converting into recovery housing for people who are coming off of wow. off of uh, substance abuse and and um, they got a grant opportunity that the town is supporting them on. The Housing Commission reviewed that and gave it support. They showed up at the select board meeting on Monday night yes. to voice their support wow. for it. They eagerly awesome. and proudly gave their support. Wow, it was, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, uh, Essence is doing a lot, you know, and uh, we're proud of Essence. You know, I'm glad to be, I'll be working with you guys more soon. And um, so when that's, anybody, parting last words. Thanks for having us on. Yes. Everybody, come to Out and About October 2nd and 3rd. Yes. It's going to be all over Essex. Um, showcase what we're about and, and all the fabulous businesses that we have and restaurants and people in the community. So mm -hmm. I don't know hope you can make it. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for viewing the Essence Show. <laughs> We're going to have you back again and talk about um, what, you know, what's, what's the measurements for all the things we talked about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in.